On his Fulbright, he completed a Master of Science and Management degree at Stanford University in Palo Alto, California, and he knows what it's like to be at this award ceremony, and he will share some of his, some short insights from his experience. Thank you, Tiki. A tēnā rā tātou, tua tahi me tautoko ngā mihi, kua mihi a ki a rātou mā, kua whetuirangi tia. Rātou, te hunga kua nai ore atu ki ngā tau whare whare ngā ngā ko rātou mā, te wahi ngā rohoki atu ki a rātou. Apis hono tātai hono, tātou te wai hōtanga o rātou mā, huri no ki a tātou kātua. Huri hia ki te pae pae rangatira, tēnā koutou, te toko whā nei, ngā mihi, ngā mihi. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Tepu Hokatene. I am of Ngati Tora Ngatira, Ngati Tama, and Ngati Fatua descent. As Penelope alluded to, I was honoured to be awarded the 2017 Fulbright Ngapai Ote Mara Matanga Graduate Award. And funnily enough, exactly one year ago today, I graduated with my master's from Stanford Graduate School of Business. Now, tonight's invitation gave me an opportunity to reflect on my Fulbright journey. And the frenetic journey that unfolded, uh, taking the time to have an introspective pause amongst the chaos was a luxury uh, rarely uh, offered. And so I hope uh, that in my hindsight, I can bring to you tonight three lessons and a challenge uh, that I learned from my time. Lesson number one. Spoiler alert, whatever field of study or research you go into, Please know that that is ultimately the byproduct of your Fulbright journey. The most critical lesson that I learned is that it is people who matter the most. He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. You will meet people on this journey that without a shadow of a lie will change your life. They will believe in you when you don't. They will expand your horizons. They will accelerate your personal and professional growth. And so while I know that you'll get caught up trying to extract every ounce of experiential value from this, from this journey abroad, please make sure you take the time and to quote the movie, Erin Brockovich, drink the cup of coffee. Build relationships with no thought of gain or no pressing need or deadline or emerging urgent issue. We are the average of the people we surround ourselves with. And please know that in 20 years, the classes that you take will not matter, but the people you meet and the connections you make will. Lesson number two. Just as a public service announcement, folks, imposter syndrome is real. <laughs> be prepared for it, because it will hit, and it's gonna be the only thing that stands in your way of getting to reach your awesome potential. When it does strike, Remember to double down on what you're good at, and as they say, keep calm and carry on. And I think imposter syndrome often manifests due to Aotearoa's penchant for humility or for whakaiti, but I often think that this is misplaced. The author C.S. Lewis once wrote that humility is not thinking less of yourself, but of thinking of yourself less. And so I beseech you, embracing humility does not require you to be overly self-effacing or reticent. Rather, open yourself up to the possible. Be generous with your time and with your capacity for connections. You never know who you'll inspire and along the way who will inspire you. Which leads me to lesson number three. For me, I was drawn immediately to Stanford by the single line of the business school's motto, change lives, change organizations, change the world. And they really believe that. They believe at that place, anything is, is possible that which you conceive to be. And despite my indoctrination into the aforementioned uh, humility brigade, if you hear enough times from these people, these brilliant, confident, ambitious people, if you hear enough that they believe in you, then eventually you can't help but start to believe it yourself. So let me be, in this spirit, the first to kick it off. I believe in you all. 
I believe in the potentiality of this room to drive change, to promote excellence, to challenge perceptions of our limitations, to be worthy ambassadors of Fulbright's mission. And my final words are a challenge. By virtue of us being here tonight and the opportunity that we have all been given, we are all privileged. This is not to disparage the hard work that has gone into your achievements, nor the sacrifice from your whānau to get you here. But it gives us an opportunity to ask ourselves, what is your relationship with your privilege? Are you entitled? Or are you entrusted? If you are entrusted with this privilege, then what will you do with it? Aristotle once said, where your talents and the needs of the world intersect, therein lies your vocation. We, the Fulbright Fano, are uniquely situated to bring positive change to whatever we choose to pursue. And this is a world calling for change. So, my esteemed scholars, who will be our change makers, if not you? Thank you.